What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also gonna be talking about two trades that I made today on the 22nd of January in 2019. And we're gonna look into some charts, some other tickers, some stocks, ETFs, that I personally see potential in for the rest of this week. But before we do get into this, feel free to smash that like button if you guys do enjoy the daily content. If you guys see value in the videos that I'm making for YouTube, it really does help the channel grow. And I really appreciate you guys if you do smash that like button. So what happened today, guys? Well, we finally got that red day that we've been waiting for since that last red day that we had, that last big red day that we had back on the 4th, I believe, of January back in 2019. This day in particular, or actually the 3rd of January, where we had that nice big sell-off. This is literally the last red day that we've had. And from there, it's pretty much been about two straight weeks of upwards push with very minimal pullbacks in the SPX and the overall markets as a whole. So before we get into you know deeper detail on that, let's just see what happened overall at the close for the major indices. We see here the SPX was down around 1.42% today. Sizable down day, sizable red day for the SPX down around $37.81. The Dow Jones closed the day today down around 300 points, down around 1.22%. And the NASDAQ composite, guys, also fell pretty decently today. The future showing that it's up around $2 right now. But if we take a look to see, you know, where we opened up at around 9.30 a.m. at around 6700 and we sold off all the way to around, let's say, um, 6640. So we sold off around 100 points in the NASDAQ. It was down around like 1%, 1.1% on the day. So not the craziest red day, right? But it's been the biggest red day that we've seen since that 3rd uh, of January red day that we saw about two weeks ago, two trading weeks ago from right now. So let's dive into the SPX. And, uh, you know, let's take a look at what's going on on this closer term chart. Actually, let's take a look first at the 180 chart. So for those of you all that recall that have been watching my videos, you know the resistance that we've been looking at for the SPX was initially at around 2635. And obviously it broke above that which made the next resistance at around 2680. And that's actually exactly where we got rejected, guys, at 2680, which was put, you know, right under that 180 SMA. So we were actually at two different resistances, one under the 180 SMA here on the 180 chart, and another one right around 2680, which really is right by that 180 SMA. So that's why I'm saying it was around two resistance points. So we can see over the past, guys you know the SPX has been rejected there once twice three times so in my opinion with all the green that we did have you know I thought it was pretty likely that we were getting rejected here because like I've been saying right we're going to have a red day eventually right and you know we've been having green day after green day after green day we broke above that you know resistance here and I thought it was a pretty good chance that we were going to get rejected here since we have been rejected over the past couple of days and today really solidified that, right? Have we gotten fully rejected? Not quite yet, but let's say we have another big red day tomorrow pushing us down, let's say back into the $2,500 level. I would say that is a pretty much, you know, that's a full on confirmation of a rejection. But why isn't it a full on rejection quite yet? Because we're holding the 50 SMA here on the 20 day, one hour chart for the SPX, which has been a support here as well as here over the past couple of weeks that we've been having this green recovery since you know the end of December right the 26th is when this uh, green started to occur right and we're still holding that 50 SMA like I said 
and this red trend line that I just drew out for you guys. So even though we got rejected on that 180 chart, guys, you know, the fact that we're holding here, we're finding it as a support and we're slowly starting to push up. That is a good sign that this is continuing the uptrend right now. But just because the technicals are showing that, that doesn't mean that we're actually going to continue the uptrend. I personally think we're going to have a couple of more red days pushing us, you know, below this channel, making that a break of pattern, right? So I personally think, you know, with the state of the economy that we're in right now, we saw Trump and, you know, China, the trade war deal that they're doing. It's not really happening right now. It's slowing down. You know, on Twitter, I just saw, uh, you know, Trump tweeted something earlier today. I'm looking at my phone right now. He said, China posts slowest economic number since 1990 due to U.S. trade tensions and new policies. Makes so much sense. It makes so much sense for China to finally do a real deal and stop playing around. So in my opinion, guys, you know, Trump clearly is trying to leverage the fact that China isn't doing so well right now. I actually think they posted like the slowest GDP growth that they've had since the early 90s or something like that. I was reading in an article, you know, he's really trying to leverage that so they can make a trade war deal, right? But the, they're really just going back and forth right now, and it doesn't seem like it's happening anytime soon. So, you know, this has a huge weight on the markets, right? And of course, the slowing down of the economy, Apple's earnings coming up, which I personally think is not going to be great for the overall stock market. I think Apple's going to go down. I'm just eager to see what, you know, we're going to be looking like pre-market hours tomorrow in the futures, in the SPY. And of course, what the large caps are going to be looking like pre-market hours. Are they going to be down? Are they going to be up? You know, only time will tell. And if we are pushing back up, you know, this direction, you know, this could be the uh, continuation of the uptrend. But of course, let's say we break into the 2600. Let's say we break 2600 back into the $2,500 range. You know, that's going to be a break of pattern, like I said. So the Dow Jones, you know, believe it or not, the Dow Jones didn't have too much. Wait, wait a second. This doesn't. What the heck? Why isn't my Dow Jones chart or my Dow Jones chart set up right now? That's weird, guys. What the heck? The last day it recorded was the 18th. So this should be right around here right now. So I don't know what's going on. Has anyone else had this problem today? I'm actually just seeing this for the first time because I was doing most of my analysis on the SPX today. But anyway, guys, same thing with the SPX, although it's not showing on my chart right now for some odd reason. I don't know why, but you know, we got rejected by the 180 SMA on the Dow Jones, right? Very similar to the SPX. And we're probably trading around here because we were down 300 points. So that would put us, yeah, literally right here. So we're still holding that 50 SMA, but you know, that's not really telling me the whole story, right? Because that's just looking at the technicals. We want to see some fundamentals and the fundamentals, in my opinion, are pointing to more downside. So if we break this trend, you know, just like the SPX guys, you know, if we break that, that's going to be a break of pattern, meaning, you know, more potential downside for the Dow Jones. And speaking of the Dow Jones, did you guys see JNJ today? I'm going to be talking about that stock a little bit later on in this video, but they actually reported pretty solid earnings. I believe their EPS was up like 0.02 compared to the analysts and they beat on revenue. I think that could be a potential bounce back play because they did good. They did pretty decent on earnings, but the stock actually went down. So we saw it go down, opening up like a 3% margin. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later so stick around if you guys want to hear about jnj but that's what i'm looking at in terms of the dow very similar pattern to the uh spx but we see here the nasdaq actually broke the 180 sma support on this 20 day one hour chart we can see it was a support back here here as well here as well here as well and we actually sunk pretty below it here today hitting around 6600 so this could be a potential flattening out spot for the Nasdaq, right? And if more selling comes tomorrow, that's obviously going to be breaking it below that support line, that trend line that I just drew out for you guys at around 6,600. And if we really break back down into the $6,500 range for the Nasdaq, you know, that's going to be putting us in a reversal pattern, you know, for the index. And if we're taking a look a little bit further here, you know, 
We do see we got rejected by the top of this trend line channel here, but we're still holding technically the 50 SMA on this 184 hour chart. So like that support I drew back on the 20 day chart, it's valid here as well. So keep an eye on that guys. If we break this and then ultimately break the next support, which would be putting us under the 180 SMA here on this 180 chart, that's going to be a strong reversal pattern, you know, for the NASDAQ. And it looks like we did get rejected by this resistance from back in when was this back in the middle of December guys so you know based on the overall market these technicals are showing us that we're getting rejected by the major SMA lines on the 184 hour chart and this is a pretty good sign for the beginning of a reversal guys this is just the beginning because we haven't broken the uh, SMA lines on those smaller time frame charts on the SPX and the Dow which is very vital we want to see them break that that before we can really say we're in a reversal pattern again to the downside right but in my opinion you know we're going to be heading down in the next couple of weeks you know whether it's tomorrow the next day I think we're going to continue to head in the downwards direction guys I've been saying this over the past couple of weeks and you know this is the red day that we've been waiting for since the third of June or not June guys January that I showed you guys you know in the beginning of this video so you know, that's pretty much it for the overall market analysis for today. Things are in very interesting spots, just like they always have been over these past couple of weeks with the funky market that we've been in. So what did I trade today? Well, big red day in the stock market means I traded TVIX. And TVIX, guys, I haven't been trading this one over the past couple of weeks, obviously because the markets have been reversing to the upside. They've been having green day after green day after green day, which means, you know, TVIX was in the red for most of those days, for every one of those days, right? We can see it topped off at 86, sold off all the way to 42, lost over 50% of its value, and now we're seeing it's holding that higher low. So this could be a good uh, reversal zone, obviously, if SPX continues to sell off. But overall today, guys, we saw it was up $7.80, 18%. I know a lot of you guys in the group traded TVIX today. You know I grabbed some of that profit today as well. And congrats to you that did very well on TVIX today because it really offered a spectacular opportunity pretty much for the entire day, right? If you really wanted to, you could have traded in and out on every one of these dips, literally every one of these dips and you would have made money guys there's not often a, uh, you know stock and ETF that does this for the entire day like this is the the definition of a beautiful uptrending chart right this is absolutely beautiful right you know but I personally right I got in on this nice big pullback on the second time at around 10.30, right? We noticed we opened up at around $44. We popped up to 46, sold off, opened up that margin of profit. I'll show you guys that right now from around this bottoming out zone at around 45 where it held above the 180 SMA up to around $46. And when we bounced on that 180 SMA, I wanted to see if it was going to continue to break up and ultimately break above this previous resistance, and if it did do that, in my eyes, that means it was reversing to the upside, continuing the uptrend, and holding that new spot down here as a higher low, which is exactly, obviously, now that we have all the data, what it did, right? Exactly what it ended up doing. So I waited for the bounce here on $45. I ended up getting in roughly at around $46.10, I believe, once we broke that resistance, because I wanted to see, are we going to break that resistance to continue to push up, or are we going to get rejected here and start selling off? And obviously, you know, the markets today were showing signs of a pretty big red day from the jump, so I, I really figured that this was a good buying opportunity anyway. I was going to buy it here and wait it out, because at this point, I believe the SPX was down like what was it down like 100 points or something we can see not 100 points like 
15 points or something like that. And, you know, at that point, it was right around here, 1030. And we can see, guys, it was getting rejected by the 50 SMA. So that just gave me more incentive to just take that initial position in TVIX. And I ended up holding it, guys, for a little bit longer than I typically hold these, um, you know, inverse ETFs on day trades, right? Well, not really inverse ETFs, these leveraged ETFs on day trades, right? I typically like to get in and out of these pretty quick, but I ended up holding through this pop-up above this resistance, ended up adding a little bit more on this little pullback here at around 1120, because at that point, guys, just think about my mindset. The market was continuing to sell off. It wasn't showing any signs of a reversal. So this just kept giving me the green light to just hold onto TVIX a bit longer. And obviously, you know, a lot of people out there you know, are impatient, that don't like to hold shares too long, especially when they're day trading. But sometimes, guys, you got to be patient. You got to just scale into your position slowly and just help, like, you know, hold that feeling inside of you where, you know, you're really anxious about it, right? I know a lot of people out there when they're first starting to trade, they're not really patient, right? They're anxious when they're holding on to their shares. And this is why I really think scaling in is the best way because if it goes down, right? Once you buy in, if you're scaling in with 10, 15% of your goal position, right? You wouldn't lose as much money. And this is what I really just did on this particular trade today. I scaled in at, at initially at like 46.10. Like I said, added a little bit more money at around 46.40. And then I just set my uh, limit order at 3%. And obviously guys, since we had a 17% day, you know, me getting that 3%, my goal pretty much every day is to get at least 3%. You know, I just took my profits there and it really just comes down to being very, very, um, you know, disciplined, right? I could have made 10%, right? But I stick to my daily goal, guys, because the whole idea is to be consistent. I'm not trying to hit a home run trade every day because if I try and do that, it can bite me in the butt and I can lose 10%, right? If I don't set a stop loss or something like that, which I do pretty much on every single trade unless I'm scaling in very slowly. But you guys, know what I'm saying, right? You've had experience where, you know, you try to get a home run trade, you get a home run trade, and then the next day, you know, you get bit in the butt. And that's why I like, you know, keeping it small, keeping it simple and staying consistent, you know, every single day. Obviously there's going to be red days, but you know, for the most part, being green overall, this is what I found to be the best way. Just be keeping it small and keeping it consistent, right? So, you know, that's what I did in terms of TVIX. Another position that I'm in right now is in Tesla, guys. In Tesla, I'm holding this one as a swing trade. So we talked about this one in yesterday's video and the video before yesterday. And I really like, you know, what Tesla is looking like right now in terms of this chart. Sure, we have not yet really confirmed the support level here at 300, 290 to 300, but I really don't think Tesla is going to fall much further. I honestly think this, uh, you know, the news that we got on this past Friday that really tanked down the Tesla shares 13%, that they cut 7% of their workforce. I think this was a little bit over, uh, you know, there's a little bit of an overreaction, you know, in the stock on Friday. I don't think it should have been down 13, 15%, whatever it was down due to this news. And I really think, you know, it's going to stabilize over the next couple of days. The price is going to stabilize. And that's when I'm going to add even more to my position. And my position right now, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'm in with a smaller position. I'm looking to scale into this one. And I think I'm in around like 298 or something like that, 298.50. I don't remember exactly exactly off the top of my head, but I put it in the chat if you guys did see that. And, you know, I got in off this, um, you know, after this big sell-off that we saw from around 306 today all the way to 295. I got back in right around here, I believe, at around 1019. And I'm in with around like 10 to 15% of my goal position. So, you know, I'm not letting this one get under 290. That's the rule on this trade for me. So my stop loss is around 290. And let's say tomorrow we break back into 300. I do plan on adding more shares. So, you know, this is going to be about a one to two week swing trade if everything does go as planned. And I'm planning on selling right around 307 as of right now, which is a resistance from, uh, I believe, uh, Friday's close 
And obviously, if we do break her up up there, it's going to hit my limit sell, right? And it's going to hit my limit sell. And I plan on getting into more shares if it breaks above $310. So that's the current goal right now in my Tesla swing trade. Let me know what you guys are doing in terms of your trading. What did you trade today? Are you swinging Tesla? I think it's a pretty solid opportunity right now. And of course, it might not go my direction, right? I could be 100% wrong. And that is why I have stop losses set, especially on, uh, you know, my swing trades, right? Very, very, very important. So let's take a look at some other stocks very quickly before I do end off today's video. So did you guys see Cron? Cron went absolutely bananas today. It actually cracked $16, ended up pulling back down all the way to $14.80, and then it went back up to $16. Literally in one day, I think it did that, right? It did. See, you can see from $14, $15, all the way to 16, back down to 1480, back up to nearly 16, 1580, and then we downtrended for the rest of the day. So could this be, you know, the peaking out point of Cron? You know, it really very well could be, honestly, guys, because we popped up to 16 right? And then we had trouble holding that above 16 level. And it seems like we're getting rejected by that resistance at around $15 because we ended up downtrending for the rest of the day back to around 1507, like we can see here. And the RSI, like it has been, is extremely overbought right now. And this could just be, in my opinion, you know, the selling off point, you know, for Cron. Do I think it's going to go back down to 11? You know, I don't really know to be honest but as of now you know I wouldn't be too shocked if we sold off back to 14 putting it right uh you know above that 50 SMA giving a nice opportunity for a potential swing if it holds and obviously if it breaks you know that could be a nice little short term uh put option play on Cron another one that I like right now is UWT I was actually tempted to take an overnight swing position in this but that would be breaking my rules guys I'm always tempted not always but I'm sometimes tempted to hold these inverse ETFs overnight and my rule very quickly for those of you guys that don't know I never hold inverse ETFs overnight since I got burned about a year and a half, two years ago on Drip, guys. Drip, I held it overnight. This was about two years ago. I made a video on this. I think the video is called like my biggest mistake trading or something like that, or my biggest loss rather. I think that's what it is. So if you guys want to watch that, look it up. But it was around two years ago. I took a position in Drip. I held it overnight. It was like a $5,000 position or something like that. $4,000 if I remember correctly. And I literally woke up the next day, right? It was down like 10, 15%. And I bag held all the way to the point where I lost 50% of my position, guys. So this was actually like a really bad, like noob mistake, right? I've been in the markets trading for like five years at this point. But that's when I first started getting into these leveraged ETFs. So I really made a noob mistake and I've learned from it, guys. I lost like two grand. That's actually my biggest loss ever. I lost around $2,000 and I've literally, I promise you guys, I have not held an inverse ETF overnight since then. Literally, it scarred me. So, you know, I got tempted because this chart is looking really good. You know, it held the 180 SMA. It's holding it nicely. It's popping up. It's looking like it's continuing the uptrend. But again, you know, I don't want to wake up tomorrow with it being down here, you know, at 13 or like 1250 or something where I'm already down 8%, right? 10%. I just don't like doing that, guys. Honestly, like I said earlier, it's all about being consistent, keeping those small percentage gains. And not to say holding these are, you know, overnight is bad, right? It's, you're not really supposed to, but it's just a little bit too risky for me. And do I hold stocks overnight? Sure, right? I'm holding Tesla overnight, but that's less risky than these inverse ETFs because these are 3x leveraged ETFs. They move three times as quick as, you know, their underlying asset. And Tesla, you know, for the most part, doesn't move crazily overnight unless something huge comes out, unless they miss on earnings, unless something big comes out like what we saw with the 7% deal, you know, this past Friday. So I feel a little bit more, uh, you know, safe 
you know, scaling in and holding those stocks overnight rather than these, you know, very quick moving leveraged ETFs. So, you know, UWT guys, if crude oil does end up pushing back into, let's say, the $53 range, that could be the continuation of the uptrend, opening up a nice opportunity for UWT. And I want to ask you guys, what do you think about a potential put option on Apple? So like I said earlier in this video, you know, Apple's reporting earnings in about a week from now. And we already know that their revenue is going to miss because the newer iPhones aren't doing as well. Sales in China are doing very poorly for Apple in general. Obviously, the whole Chinese economy is shot. Like I said, you know, GDP is doing is, is, you know, growing very slowly. It's doing very bad in China. The economy is doing terrible, which is a big, big market for Apple. So I think, you know, with the revenue miss on Apple and the earnings are not, they're just not going to be good, guys. Let's be honest. The earnings are not going to be good. You know, this could open up a solid opportunity for Apple to go down, making short-term puts a pretty solid play, in my opinion. I'm thinking about it to hedge against my position because for all you that don't know, you know, I'm a long Apple. I'm a long-term investor in Apple. So I'm looking to profit on the downside, add more shares at lower prices and hold for the long term, build out a nice big position because at this point, guys, Apple's like a value play, right? They're not much of a growth stock anymore. And they're actually opening up to be a solid dividend play. I think their payout ratio is like 24% right now, meaning that they're paying out 24% of their earnings in the form of dividends, meaning that they can grow that very nicely over the next coming years, pay out more in dividends, especially since they have a crap ton of cash on the balance sheet. So their dividend right now is like 1.7% or something like that. And I really could see it being 3% you know, in the next five, 10 years. And I really want to build this into a nice value dividend play, you know, unless something crazy happens where a new iPhone player, a new like, uh, you know, smartphone player comes in the game and knocks Apple off their feet, which I don't really think, uh, you know, is happening right now. You know, I plan on this being a big position in the next five to 10 years. So let me know what you guys think on Apple, a potential put play, you know, let's see what Facebook's doing. So Facebook, you know, it's holding that uptrend nicely. It broke out of that 180 SMA, nothing too crazy there. We see the sell off in Amazon. If it breaks that 180 SMA uh, support here, that could potentially be a nice put, especially if the markets continue to, you know, push down. If we see a lot of other news come out that's bad, detrimental to the economy, to the trade war, to everything that we've been dealing with, you know, that could be a potential play right there. So, you know, that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. Tomorrow, what I'm watching very closely is Tesla. I want to add more to that position if it does end up doing well, going back into the $300 range. I'm looking at UWT very closely. Oh, of course, you guys, guys, we saw a crazy move today in natural gas. We see you guys had a 20% loss today. And natural gas had a very big loss today, or yeah, a very big loss today as well. We can see I had this channel drawn, you know, earlier on in the day. We broke this level where that arrow is. And we can see, you know, if there's a potential push back here, you know, a potential push to the top of this channel, you know, that could open up a very big opportunity in you gas, guys. So take a look at this. Keep an eye on this. That's why I'm watching you gas tomorrow very closely. I almost forgot to talk about it in this video but very big mover today d gas absolutely killed it so tomorrow you guys uwt tesla and of course tvix if we continue to sell off so you know what i think could potentially happen very quickly one minute before i do end this video is i think tomorrow guys since we sold off heavily today i think we could potentially start to see some green heading off early on in the day followed by some more selling. So what we typically see after we have a big red day is we slowly start to see a pushback up towards the end of the market, which we slowly start to see today. And that heads into the next day before selling off strongly again. So that's one scenario that I think is possible for the SPX. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about that. I would love to know. So if you guys enjoyed the video, 
feel free to smash that like button, leave a comment, subscribe for future content, turn on that notification bell so you guys can see when I'm uploading these videos. It's typically around 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day. So if you do enjoy it, just keep in touch with the channel. Hope you all had a great day today. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.